Hi, hello. Welcome to the episode of Isaiah's Newsstand. It's your host, Isaiah Edwards. The date is September the 27th, 2023. Hopefully this episode finds you well in good spirits and high hopes. As for me, I'm doing pretty good. Today treated me pretty well, though I will say I have like the worst foot pain and now my other foot, which is just very classic, you know, at first it was my right heel and now it's kind of like the front half of my left foot. Uh, in, in a way, the silver lining here is that like my other foot, I don't notice the pain there as much. Like the heel feels like good by comparison. Uh, the, the obviously downside is it's very hard to walk and I've been munching Advil like candy for the day. So I guess that's a good start to the food corner. Uh, but the job did provide. It was a treat day. They fed the little piggies. Uh, no, it wasn't money. <laughs> I wish. We did have one treat day like that where they literally did give us $100. That was nice. Best treat day ever. <laughs> but um, no, this was chili. It was free chili. And we could get the choice of beef and or the white chicken chili. So my fat ass, of course, got both. And it was fine. It was good. Uh, I will say I kind of got debated a bit. Uh, I didn't know that we were going to have this today. And as, um, you know, the time was coming up for my break, one of my coworkers came up to me and they're like, oh, you're going to get the uh, the chili and the grilled cheese? Because that's what we usually get. They usually like, well, it, it can vary, but sometimes they will give us like a grilled cheese thing on the side, which is like, oh, oh, oh money. Uh, but other times it's just like grilled cheese or tomato soup, you know, yeah, yeah it just depends. Really depends on what they're doing that day, what the vibe is. Uh, but yeah, so it's just the chili. And I was like, oh, okay, I'll get this and the stale crackers and I'll call it a day uh, with some hot sauce, of course. Uh, but yeah, it worked. It was good. And I had some cheese puffs on the first round. So yeah, we, we dug in. It was nice. A very culinary tr- uh, t- treat experience. That's what I was looking for. Culinary experience. All right. Uh, is there anything else I really wanted to cover? Uh, no. Personal news check. Food corner check. Uh, yeah. Let's go ahead and uh, do our little startup, and then um, we will get into some news. Uh, da, 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 da. <sighs> I don't know. This is a mix. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to like blow smoke up your butt. <laughs> it's an episode. What can I say? You know the vibes. And if you don't, welcome. Hi, Isaiah's newsstand. It's me. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Whew. All right, let's get started. From BBC News, J.P. Morgan settles Epstein lawsuits with U.S. Virgin Islands and Jess Staley. All right, so, you know, we were moving up into the trial in kind of classic, you know, big money fashion. J.P. Morgan's like, you know what we need to do? Let's just wrap this up before we even get started. <laughs> Uh, J.P. Morgan has reached uh, settlements with U.S. Virgin Islands and former executive Jess Staley to resolve lawsuits over its alleged dealings with convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein. It will pay $75 million to the territory, which alleged the bank facilitated Epstein's sex trafficking ring. Now, J.P. Morgan did not admit any wrongdoing in the settlement, which is a very classic trope in these things. It's like, hey, here's some fucking money, and you just go away, and we don't have to say we did anything wrong. Um, let's see. Previously, there was a $290 million, $290 million settlement, settlement with Epstein's victims. Um, let's see. They said it, it settled with Mr. Saley for an undisclosed sum in a confidential agreement. So, uh, where Staley kind of uh, fits in here, we've we discussed him kind of on another episode, but essentially, he was the manager for Epstein's account, and uh, instead of really managing it, he just becomes Epstein's friend, and, like, more or less gets, like, exclusive dibs on, like, the girls who were coming through, and it was very disgusting. Um, there's emails that were leaked that essentially were like, they were trying to describe them as like Disney princesses as, as like a coded speak, 
But it's like, no, dude, everyone knows what the fuck you're talking about, you goddamn monsters. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, he's on the hook, but they don't say how much he was in for. Um, what is it? Um, Chase kind of tries, or J.P. Morgan tries to um, lump him into it as well by suing him. But obviously, it's all kind of lumped into the settlement. Uh, but they're like saying, well, he was actually the reason that this went so poorly. But then his response is like, well, you guys had all the control. I was just managing and like could tell you what was going on. That's really all I had. I was the only, only say. Um, cringe as it is, they're both right here. I think just St Stanley should have definitely done something. And also at the same time, the bank, the higher ups, knew the whole time what the fuck was happening. And they said, well... Look, he's making us so much fucking money, so how do we handle this? But they didn't fucking handle him. They didn't fucking stop working with him. No, they, they just wanted to keep making the money until it was too unsustainable. And then Staley left and fucking Epstein left to another bank doing other things. And then, of course, Epstein, he's gone, you know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so this is kind of the conclusion before we really even get it started. Uh, it's crazy that yeah, this even got materialized. I mean, it's a good thing that, you know, the people uh, of the U.S. Virgin Islands came together to make this happen. Though, granted, I heard that it was a, a specific lawyer or, you know, like, head at the time, and then she kind of did it and went, like, over the heads of, you know, her higher-ups or whatever to make sure that this shit happened, and she, like, lost her job over it. So, I mean, sadly, that's just par for the course when it comes to this kind of fucking shit. It's like, hey, I'm trying to do the fucking right thing, and you guys are trying to sit on the fucking truth because y'all hands are dirty. Uh, so, I mean, this might be the most we kind of get out of this part of it in terms of just, like, you know, the Epstein Islands part. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I'm always down to chronicle this shit, cover it, you know, when it comes up. And, you know, I know Epstein in himself is old news. He's in the ground now, cold as fuck. But sadly, the players, everyone involved, like, they're still here. And I think it's worth it to put the magnifying glass and the flashlight to these motherfuckers and burn them a little, you know? Uh, it's really all we can do. All right, let's uh, talk about some more recent news, breaking news. Uh, you know, live people is what I'm trying to get at. Uh, all right, from the Associated Press. Uh, the United States secures the release of the soldier who crossed into North Korea two months ago. All right. The U.S. has secured the release of a U.S. soldier who sprinted across a heavily fortified border into North Korea more than two months ago. And he is on his way back to America, officials announced Wednesday. Uh, U.S. ally Sweden and rival China helped with the transfer. So essentially kind of just how it went down transit wise is North Korea is like, yeah, we're giving him up. I kind of assume that he's just too low value. It's kind of what it's being suspected is like, we just can't juice you for anybody. <laughs> we can't get any leverage. We can't get any aid support. So like, uh, yeah, we can just like give you back, <laughs> uh, which is good. I mean, they, they've had a kind of a, a weird track record when it comes to like, look, there's been some times where. An incident like this happens, and then the person comes back, and they're in a coma, <laughs> you know? So it's like, oh, shit, fuck. Then there's other times where it's like a guy seemingly looks like he defects and has, like, a whole new life, and he becomes, like, a propaganda agent. So he really wasn't sure how this was going to get spun for, for Travis King. But they didn't, like, since they don't negotiate and deal with us in any kind of direct way, uh, they had to go through intermediaries. So... Essentially, he got flown to China, which is an ally to North Korea, and then a ambassador, excuse me, um, from Sweden in China escorted King along with another ambassador from China or whatever, you know, uh, to uh, the border or whatever, and he was, you know, taken back home. Uh, I believe uh, this has already kind of already happened now, so he's like, you know, back in the States, debriefing, all that kind of shit. I think he's gotten a chance to see his family or Will soon. Uh, so that's good. Uh, there is the matter of the initial reason why he was getting sent back, which I believe is for, like, um, you know, actual legal reasons. Like, he was doing shit in North Korea that was bad. You know, he's, like, throwing hands at clubs and being disorderly and shit. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, this guy, when he was supposedly getting on the plane to, you know, get court-martialed or whatever the fuck... 
he like pulls a fucking wing doodle and just dips and goes on a tour in North Korea, uh, gets to the border, or South Korea, I'm sorry, gets to the border, uh, the Korean border, and just like, oh, I'm just gonna fucking run. I'm just gonna fucking make it happen. And you just you apparently hear this guy running and just laughing, ha, 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 and runs across the border and is apprehended immediately. Um, he says over just like, you know, racial discrimination, you know, he was, wasn't treated fairly. Those are his reasons, but they're like, yeah, okay. They hold on to this guy for, you know, two months and they just say, okay, get the fuck out of here. Um, let me see here. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's more or less a story as, as we, you know, as caught up as we can be. Um... Yeah, don't really want to dwell too much on it, but obviously I'll be here for more updates if I hear uh, any more of the fate of Travis King. But yeah, that 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 popped up today, and I was like, shit, well, let's let's go ahead and talk about that. Uh, let's go ahead and move along uh, to Saturn news from the USA Today. Uh, and trigger warning here, uh, you know, sexual assault, uh, at least in the title. Um, will kill, will rape, more murder of tech exec in baltimore prompts hunt uh dire warnings that is not a good title by the way i don't like i don't like it a murder suspect labeled by police as willing to do anything he can to cause harm is the target of an all-out search after a 26 year old software development company founder was found slain at her baltimore apartment baltimore police said Pava Marie Lapierre was found around 11.30 a.m. EDT after someone called for help. She died from blunt force trauma. Authorities announced an arrest warrant at a news conference Tuesday afternoon for Jason Dean Billingsley, 32 years old. He is charged with first-degree murder. Uh, he is believed to be armed and extremely dangerous. We implore residents to be aware of your surroundings at all times, acting police commissioner Richard Worley said at a news conference. This individual will kill and he will rape. He will do anything he can to cause harm. Uh, apparently Billingsley has been convicted of a violent crime that included a sex offense. He was also sentenced to 30 years in prison but was released on parole in October of 2022. He is six foot one and 200 to 215 pounds. He has uh, medium brown skin, dark brown hair, and brown eyes. He occasionally wears glasses. Now, I don't know in terms of like the, the sexual assault part, if that was involved here. I only read that there was just blunt force trauma to appear. Um, I don't know if they just want people to be aware of that, like just what he's potentially capable of, or there's, you know, I, I don't know, whatever. But um, obviously, this is a fucking sad thing. Uh, I did want to talk about, a little bit about Lapeer. Uh, she is known for, uh, known in the Baltimore area for her startup, EcoMap Technologies, which improves accessibility by information, uh, accessibility of information by mapping it and putting it in, uh, and putting it in on an accessible platform. According to her LinkedIn page, the company started in 2018. Uh, let's see. Pava has been an inspiration to so many people. She was driven, creative, hardworking, and relentless in her efforts with her wonderful team at Ecomap Technologies. Pava made an impact in every endeavor she undertook and every life she touched. Uh, that was from her father, Frank Lapier. Uh, let's see. She will be forever missed as a daughter, sister, granddaughter, niece, cousin, and loyal friend. Lapeer said he hoped said he hoped to be able to provide more information soon and ask for privacy. Um, so yeah, I mean this is super unfortunate. I know that in a lot of these kind of situations, like you you look and see why a person like this, why this event's getting so much coverage, is because this is a you know person who's made a lot of money, and you know that just changes the word that changes the perspective, which you know it just shouldn't, but it does in a lot of these stories and. That's why, you know, I have been seeing it a lot. And sadly, it is unfortunate, period. Like, you know, no matter who you are, a loss of a life is a loss of a life. 
Um, and not to mention an ad that like Lapierre seems to be a really good person. Seems like she was a person really applying herself to do good things for the world. And, you know, wasn't just making like a kind of commercial product that seems like a, like a cash grab, you know, you could easily use your talents and stuff like this to make some fucking, you know, m online mobile game that does microtransactions. But instead, you're using technology and helping people out. Um, so I think that's cool. And, you know, it's unfortunate that, you know, uh, that her life was snuffed out in this kind of way. Obviously, I hope that they do find Beansley and, you know, that no more, you know, shit happens, you know, that it's, you know, just quick and easy, I hope. But yeah, I mean, it's it's sad and unfortunate. And my condolences to the family. Um, but what I was just saying is just like, it is unfortunate. It's like, yeah, like this is a Forbes, like a person who was admitted in like Forbes magazine. So it's like, of course, this person's just going to make more headlines than like, let's say, just an average person. I know there, there was like a story I was considering covering and I was just like, I think it was in uh, California and these two models were killed. Like that, those are two people. Like th their lives mattered, and their lives were snuffed out the same way as appears. But yet, even in my fucking lizard brain, I didn't fucking do that research and do that coverage because I didn't want to bog people down. In another thing, but this one just seems like oh, it's bigger because it's you know this this person. Um, so I don't know. Maybe that's more of a read on me and less on society. I don't know. Whatever. But um, I did feel like you know let's let's go ahead and just do some coverage on that. Talk about it. Um, but yeah, we have one more thing to cover. It's technically good news if you ask me. Um, you know, you ask the uh, Isaiah's New Stand podcast family. I think it's overall fine. <laughs> uh, all right, let me take my last break and then we'll do that. We'll we'll cover that. All right, we got to talk about some Donald Trump shit from the associate. <coughs> <Ooh. coughs> Fuck, man. Mm. I'm withering away <laughs> from the associated press. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm sorry, y'all. Judge rules Donald Trump defrauded banks and insurers while building real estate empire. I mean, I got to say fucking duh. Like... Ugh, let, let me, before we get into this, let me cook a little bit. I always hate and will forever hate the motherfuckers who goes, look, I know, Donald Trump, not the best guy. He's, he's, he's a real piece of shit, real piece of work. I know, I'll agree with you on that. But let me tell you, the reason I'm voting for him, he's a good businessman. I dare say great businessman. Every time I hear that, I always, ooh, I always wish I had a ray gun. Not just a gun, a ray gun. To use because I want to set that motherfucker to like ash and just like come on dude like are you serious like just say you're rooting for the bad guy it's like I respect that way more than the motherfucker who makes this long ass dumb ass answer like I'm an idiot because I know the motherfucker couldn't even run Trump University like get the fuck out of here but anyway I'm glad that a judge saw this shit from like 10 miles away and just said you know what you're fucking guilty and they, they called it out so let's let's get into it uh, we're from New York. Let's go to New York. Uh, a judge ruled Tuesday that Donald Trump committed fraud for years while building the real estate empire that catapulted him to fame and the White House. I don't know why I said this in so way that way. Um, and he ordered some of the former's, uh, some of the former president's companies removed from his control and dissolved. Which, this this is big news. This is a civil lawsuit, by the way. So it's not like there's anything like, you know, criminal put the fucking shackles on him. He's got enough of those, those fucking, you know, trials that we will get to at some point. You know, they're down the pipe. But um, Judge Arthur Ingeron ruling in a civil lawsuit brought by New York Attorney General Letitia James found that Trump and his company to seize banks, insurers, and others by massively overhauling his assets and exaggerating his network on paperwork used in making deals and securing loans. Now, if you're thinking, Isaiah, this kind of sounds familiar, like we maybe talked about this before. Yes, correct. Awesome. I love you. Thank you for paying attention. Thank you for having such a great memory and like putting me in your memory. Oh my God. Um, because we did talk about this a little bit. 
I I was ranting and raving how like it's crazy how Trump could see like just use this like just math magic and whatever and just say you know what actually the Trump towers they're big they're big as fuck and he just gets to just fudge the numbers and those numbers became reality on paper and people had to live by those numbers and like you're doing this shit you're warping the like all the kind of just like value of your estate when and however you want to like dodge taxes to then make your shit bigger than for deal like you shrink it for taxes then grow it again if you're talking to someone on deals and it's just like wait like that's not fair that's not right but for trump he's like ah, i'm allowed to like make business decisions i'm allowed to like there's nothing untoward about what i did but it's like no like literally what you're doing is breaking the framework of what a like how a deal is supposed to be negotiated and by fudging these numbers like this in a legal capacity like on paper like this is a square footage of my estate oh actually it's this but i'm going to tell you it's that like that that is a lie that affects the whole fabric of a negotiation of a deal and therefore you get better numbers and therefore you're the people who are trying to make a deal with you get fucking screwed and according to trump that's just the way it is and weirdly if you're playing to the heart of a person, and I do feel like this is why people love to say he's a good businessman, is that in the society, that's what you want to believe, right? Is that you're always right and they're always wrong. And it should be that way because we're just we're just Americans. This is just America. That's just how it works. I have a bigger brain and therefore I get to take advantage of that. And it's like, no, man, all you're doing is just being a charlatan. You're just being a fucking con man. Like, <laughs> and I get it that feels American but it's wrong it's bad you should just be doing that fucking shit and you shouldn't be getting away with it so I'm glad that a judge has called this out even like I said before we even have actually gotten trial which I didn't even know you could do but apparently in this situation a judge can assess a situation look at the evidence look at things that have already been presented and say look I'm gonna already make a ruling and since this isn't got a jury involved you like you've asked for me to rule this is what I'm ruling and you know now we're gonna go into court and we're just gonna, you know, more or less talk about divvying shit up or, and or you guys are gonna try to go for an appeal, uh, which, you know, Trump's team is immediately doing. Uh, also, I know that it got so bad that, um, I'm getting his name wrong, Trump, or er, er, Judge Erdogan or whatever, he, in Goron, here we go, I'll just read this part. In Goron, noting that he had rejected those arguments earlier in the case, essentially um, them asking to get the shit thrown out because it's like, oh, you're just like, well, Trump's lawyers in his own summary judgment bid asked that the judge, asked the judge to throw out the case, arguing that there wasn't any evidence the public was harmed by Trump's actions. They also argued that many of the allegations in the lawsuit were barred by the statute of limitations. Ingeron, noting that he had rejected those arguments earlier in the case, equated them to the plot of the film Groundhog's Day. Or Groundhog Day. I always thought it was Groundhog Day. Whatever. Um, he fined five defense lawyers $7,500 um, each as punishment for engaging in repetitive, frivolous arguments, but denied James' request to sanction Trump and other um, defendants. So essentially, he's like, I I'll, I'll balance it. I will fine them for just being fucking annoying, but like, I'm not going to sanction them. And, you know, I got to give credit to Letitia James. When I heard her case, I was like, look, I believe you. I, you got me. I, I'm here. But, like, I just always feel like I'm living in the fucking imperial core. And, like, people like Trump are always going to win out. And, and that's just how it's going to be. But, like, truly, it just this year is definitely proving me wrong in the best way. And I love it. I love being humbled and brought to my knees. Um, and, and this brings joy. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I mean, that's more or less where we're at. Uh, like I said, Trump's definitely going to appeal this shit, uh, because I mean, this is definitely jamming up the money. Uh, oh, I guess I, I did want to read my highlighted portion. Might as well. Ingeron found that Trump consistently overvalued Mar-a-Lago, you know, a hot, hot contested place, uh, you know, where he keeps all his fucking documents in his shower, uh, infl inflating its value on one financial statement by as much as 2,300%. That's crazy. Just 2,300%, just like, it's actually worth this. It's actually this big. It's, that's, that's literally just not how it works, brother. You can't do that. The judge also rebuked Trump for lying about the size of his Manhattan apartment. It's so big. 
but then also maybe it's so small for taxes. Uh, Trump claimed his three-story Trump Tower penthouse is nearly three times its actual size, valuing it at $327 million. Now, I will say there's like maybe certain times you could get away with it. Like if you're just talking in casual, passing, whatever, maybe even like Forbes magazine to reference them again. Like, yeah, you got, you got to pay to even get on that fucking shit, by the way. But like, let's say you do. Sure, you can flex, you can finesse, you can massage some numbers. But like, that's not to the IRS. Like at the end of the day, when you do this kind of shit for tax purposes, when you do this shit when it comes to deals... Like, you cannot overvaluate your shit to, like, just fantasy numbers and then, like, just get away with it. Uh, granted, if I was a person on the under end, end of this conversation, though, m making a deal with Trump, which I would be like, this is crazy. Why? How, how did I get here? Um, I'd leave. I would just leave because it's like, at the end of the day, I want to make actual fucking money. And I, I don't know, man. I've heard, I've heard so many fucking funny stories when it comes to, like, lawyers... Being like, look, yeah, I worked for Trump, you know, I was on the team, you know, I led the thing. And it's like, literally at some point, he's just like trying to pay me an IOUs and fucking like horses or some dumb shit. Like, you know what I mean? And it's like, dude, come on. Like, yeah, that's what you get. <laughs> uh, but in the end, I think a lot of times, at least in that sense, people are doing it for the um, notoriety, right? Like, you're getting like good vibe for that. Um, let's see here. I know just more union talk. And since we're on the t subject of Trump, both Trump and Biden went to, um, you know, talk. Uh, I, I want to say union talk, but you can't say that for Trump in this situation because he did not go to a union place. I, I know some places have kind of spun it that way. But essentially, Biden actually went to a picket line. Uh, once again, I believe in Michigan. I'm kind of freeballing here. This is the end. Whatever. Um and, you know, he was supporting the protesters. He was definitely with the union. We fucking love to see that. So let's fucking go. Um, that's why we're riding with fucking Biden. Even though I do always have to preface, preface um, earlier in the fucking year, he shut down the railroad fucking union because uh, oh, well, we can't have fucking shit slow down. Like, uh, this is a holiday weekend. Like, fuck that. So at the end of the day, hey, at least you showed up sometimes. <laughs> at least you showed up uh, here. But no, Trump went to another place, I, I believe once again in Michigan, but not union. And it's like, yeah, I'm pro work too. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, once again, doing the grift live. You gotta love it. Um, there you go. That's my bonus. I got that in there. I'm happy. Um, give myself a pass on the back. And yeah, that's all I really have though for today. If you'd like to support the effort uh, beyond what you're doing by listening right now, you're the GOAT. Awesome heart emojis to you. But if you've got some money, and if you don't, I understand. That's okay. Um, but if you do and you'd like to support the effort, you can become a newsie officially. We can just write it in blood. No, um, money. But uh, every $5 a month, it gets you um, shout out at the top of the month. And I plug a project that you're on, you know, kind of networking situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then let's see, free ways to hit me up, IsaiahNews1 at gmail.com. Find me on all the socials. Free ways to also bonus support, uh, thumbs up on the YouTubes, subscribe to the YouTube. And then all the stars, they help a lot. All the positive reviews, comments, those help a lot. But yeah, hopefully I'll see you soon for some more good news. I love you. Bye-bye.